Hello and welcome to EPC. My name's Jack and today I'm going to be building a PC on a student's budget. Back to school just reminds me of my mum dragging me down to the supermarket to buy me stationery that was inevitably going to end up in the ceiling. So let's repress those back to school feelings of dread by building a gaming PC. Before we start, can I please ask that you subscribe and leave the video a like if you enjoyed it. Also stick around till the end of the video where we're going to be putting the build through a live benchmark. Just so you know that we're not chatting. So, here we have our parts for today's build. It's not a $3,000 3090 monster, it's very much built around a student's budget. And you'll only have to live off super noodles for about three months, so big plus. From the ground up then, I chose the B450 MSI Gaming Plus Max as our motherboard. This ATX board can support up to third gen Ryzen processors and second gen Ryzen APUs out of the box but a BIOS update will extend that compatibility. It supports PCIe Gen 3, not the latest generation, but our GPU of choice can't take advantage of Gen 4 anyway. There's a whole host of useful ports and technology crammed into this board, including USB 3.2 Gen 2, 32 gigabit per second turbo M.2 technology, core boost technology, audio boost technology, and everything else you come to expect to find in a motherboard these days. What's next? CPU then, Paul. The CPU I've gone with is the Ryzen 5 2600X. If you want, you can swap this out for a 2600 non-X if you want to save $30. The non-X versions of processors, you can think of as the base level processors with a relatively low power demand and thermal output compared to the X models, which is essentially just a beefed up version of the base models, supporting higher base clock speeds, boost speeds, and almost double the TDP. Both can be overclocked, However, in most cases, the X models are designed to be pushed a little harder. With a core count of six cores, 12 threads, a base clock speed of 3.6 gigahertz, and a max core boost speed of 4.2, you'll have no trouble in even the most intensive CPU dependent games, and even some moderate workloads. Not that you'll be doing any work on this thing. You can't do work on a gaming PC, that's no fun. Criminal is what it is, criminal. The RAM? I've gone for Corsair Vengeance Pro RGB to add some much needed RGB to the mix. Does RGB make your machine go faster? Yes. This 16 gig kit comes in at a clock speed of 3200 megahertz. This clock speed is fine, but if you want to utilize Ryzen to its full potential, you might want to upgrade to a kit clocked at 3600 megahertz if you can stretch your budget just a little further. Or you could always upgrade to 32 gigabytes if you're looking to do some workstation tasks or video editing. And to contain our mid-range monster, we're gonna be slapping it in an NZXT H510. The case, when dealing with budget PCs, is another component where you can save quite a lot of cash. That being said, there's no need to opt for a low quality knockoff when companies like NZXT offer so much for so little. The key factors for consideration for a good case are airflow, layout, and to a lesser extent, aesthetic and the H510 ticks all those boxes for me. To power all of our components I've opted for the Thermaltake Smart RGB 500 watt. Not just any RGB, it's Smart RGB. This little power supply is 80 plus, certified to EU standard up to 85% efficiency. You may want to opt for a higher wattage PSU if you plan on upgrading your GPU or applying a heavy overclock. At 100% system load we should only be seeing roughly a 70% PSU load here so it will be fine for the job. Storage then, and I've gone for a 500 gigabyte Samsung Evo SSD. Again, this is a budget focused choice, but you can definitely go for an M.2 now or upgrade in the future as our motherboard supports it. For our purposes though, 500 gigabytes is enough for Windows and a couple of games, but depending on your needs, you may want to opt for a higher capacity. GPU. Where'd you find that GPU? The cupboard. So the GPU and I've chosen one you'll only have to sell one kidney for, the GTX 1660 Ti, with its 1536 CUDA cores clocked in at 1800 megahertz, and a juicy six gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. You'll have little trouble playing AAA games in 1080p, and even some esports titles. Like Splitgate runs at well over 160 FPS, even in 1440p. So your GPU won't be the reason you're missing shots. 1660 Ti is next. Although it does absolutely nothing for my aim, we see a comfortable average of 180 FPS. So then, let's move over to the desk now, where we're gonna do some benchmarks. Okay, so 
We're moving on to some benchmarks now, just to see how this little computer does. Okay, so we're going to start off with some CSGO. Obviously, it's a less demanding title than most. Uh, it will pretty much run on anything. And as you can see, we're doing pretty well on Dust 2 uh, with a 173 FPS average, 1% um, lows of 87 and 0.1% of 57, which is pretty good. It's a good experience. Obviously, we're on ultra settings and in 1080p because you don't want to push a little 1660 Ti too hard. But you definitely could go to 1440p if you wanted to, uh, especially in this title. Um, OK, so we're loaded into Split Gear now, which is obviously a newer title and it's doing, it's doing pretty well for us. Uh, we are obvious where if you haven't seen our benchmark for split gate already then click here We do have the 1660 Ti featured in the benchmark video So if you want to see more on how it performs and against other GPUs go ahead and have a look split gate does kind of run on anything That was the point I made in the benchmark video But we are getting a solid like 300 FPS at the minute in 1080p so you could definitely Crank up the resolution if you wanted to okay, so we've loaded into a single-player title now just to see what sort of FPS we get when we're not relying on online and servers and stuff like that. As you can see in Days Gone in 1080p, all in ultra settings, we're getting a comfortable like 73 FPS average, which is pretty good again. Anything over 60 I consider absolutely playable. It looks great, performs great. 41 FPS on the 1% lows and not too bad stuttering with 14 FPS on the 0.1%. Okay, so that's pretty much it. And that was our back to school build. So perfect for if yourself is in college or something like that, university, you want to do some light gaming and some studying as well. And perfect if you want to buy it for your kid, cousin, anything like that. It plays some pretty heavy games for a decent price and they can use it for studying as they grow up. Links to all the products will be down in the description if you want to have a look. Um, that's pretty much it guys. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe and this has been Jack and I'll see you in the next one.